Good morning, beloveds. Um, it's very cloudy this morning. I went for a walk, and um, there was this bird just singing away. And so it took me a minute to find him because he was at the top of a tree. And it was a cardinal, so there's this splotch of red. And of course, the picture's not going to do it justice, but um, just at the top of the tree, singing his heart out. Uh, it was beautiful. <clears throat> it was beautiful. The, the birds are definitely singing the song of spring. Um, so it's interesting to walk around and watch the, the trees are putting out leaves. Um, and uh, the, all of the, the plants that were pretty much decimated by the snow we had about three weeks ago. Um, a lot of them are coming back. So it's interesting to see those green shoots come up. Uh, there's a bunch of agave, uh, and they're big. Some of them are, you know, taller than me. Um, or at least th they look that way. They're definitely wider than I am tall. Um, and you can see the, 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 the cold damage on the outer leaves, but in the very center they have this fresh green. Um, so, you know, Mother Nature's pretty amazing. She can, she can... <laughs> bring something back from it looks dead and it's not it's not there's still life in there um so i i walk by it and every time i see that i have hope all right today is march 12th our title is identification <clears throat> and let me remind you we are in the month of faith so, identification. Spiritual mind treatment is an affirmation of the divine presence in and through all things, all people, and all events. There is one intelligent law governing all things. We live in this divine presence and may consciously use this universal law. But someone might ask, how does our prayer, our treatment, or our affirmation reach the person, <clears throat> place, or thing that we wish to help? This question is answered when we come to realize that we are individualized expressions of the one life. Whenever we identify our thinking with some person or thing, we identify him or her or it as an object of that thinking. And automatically, because there is one law operating, the result of that thinking will be for that person or thing. Since the focus of our treatment or prayer is in the one mind, the mere act of identifying our affirmation with that person or thing brings about the effect upon him, her, or it. <clears throat> Today, I am identifying myself, everyone else, and everything I do with the Divine Presence. I am not trying to influence people. I am not holding thoughts to make things happen. I am not concentrating divine energies for any purpose whatsoever. Rather, I am still knowing, rather I am still knowing that God is all over, in all and through all. Through my affirmation, I am watching, expecting and knowing that there are that there will be a reaction through whatever I identify with my word. Therefore, I am at ease, I am at peace, I affirm the Divine Presence and its manifestation as happiness, prosperity, and well-being for everyone. And the Bible quote is, we dwell in Him and He in us, because He hath given us His Spirit. And that is from 1 John 4.13. Okay. <clears throat> um... If you've had a practitioner treatment, or if you haven't, I'm going to let you in on one of the things that when we're trained as practitioners, think of them like spiritual counselors, spiritual coaches, um, what, along that line. Uh, when we pray for people, um, one, we're treating ourselves, but two, when, we, when we're praying about someone, even if we are praying to that person, yeah, I, I hate not to, but 
uh, when we're praying about that person and that person is in the room with us, we always identify them by name. We don't use you. We use their name. So if I were praying for Susan, then when I do the treatment, I speak my word for Susan, that Susan's body knows exactly what it needs to do to um, function at peak efficiency. Um, you know, so, and then like, if I were to, if I were to speak my, then I speak my word for Jeffrey, um, that Jeffrey is one with spirit, that everything that he needs to know is at his fingertips right now, that his, that he is dipping into an inexhaustible well that Jeffrey knows that the spirit is with him. So we, we treat, it's like third person and it's, it's a little weird. It's a little weird to hear yourself referred to when you're sitting in the room by your name, but we are treating ourselves. So I know I speak my word for, um, and I use those examples of, so that you can kind of see that we, that's how we identify. Um, now there is a, there's another part to this. It's like, I can speak my word all I want. So I am knowing the truth about you. I'm knowing the truth about Ruth. I'm knowing my truth about Sharon. I'm knowing my, you know, I'm knowing this truth. I know this truth. The other half of the equation is, is that all of the, the, the people that we identify with, they have to accept the truth as well. So, uh, that's how the one mind, it's like, we're all in this wonderful web of energy and we're all coming to, um, uh, so the energy, th there's no, there's nothing that can get between the energy that I am touching and the energy that that person is touching. All I'm doing is giving that energy a shape they still have to accept it. And once that energy gets there, because I have said, this person that I care about um, desires this energy um, in this shape. And so I am requesting that and the law says, okay, great, let me send that energy. So that energy gets to that person and that person goes, huh, no. Or that person goes, huh, yes. Or that person goes, huh, okay, but, and they have the choice to reshape the energy. They have the choice to accept it. They have the choice to uh, reject it. And they have the choice to reshape it. Um, that's, and that's the beauty of the, what we do. Um, there's never a question that our prayer won't be answered. But there are a variety of ways to answer the prayer. So, while we may be expecting a specific outcome, it may look different. And that's life. <laughs> that really is. So, identification. Spiritual mind tree. His sentences are long and his punctuation is a little weird, which is why occasionally I'll stop and redo it. So, spiritual mind treatment is an affirmation of the divine presence in and through all things, all people, and all events. That's why the first step is recognition. We know that there is one mind. We know that there is one life. We know that there is one presence. We know that there is one power. There is one intelligent law governing all things. We live in this divine presence and make and may consciously use this universal law. We're always using the universal law. Whether or not we're doing it consciously is the question. But some might ask, how does our prayer, our treatment, or our affirmation reach the person, the place, or the thing we wish to help? Which is what he's, this is what he's talking about today. The question is answered when we come to realize that we are individualized expressions in the one life. We're all part of the same web of life. We're all connected. That's why I like the idea of a web. Um... Or you could use, uh, I, when I know early on in my uh, science of mind education, it was also net. Uh, we're all little knots in the net. So, and there's no time and space in spirit. 
so we can retroactively treat and we can treat for the future and we can treat now and it doesn't matter the distance. Uh, we can be right down the street, we can be in the same room, we can be halfway across the world or all the way across the world. Um, whenever we identify our thinking with some person or thing, we identify him or her or it as the object of that thinking and automatically, because there is one law operating, the result of that thinking will be for that person or thing. Um, we don't even have to name a name. Uh, frequently, we will get prayer treatments and we may get nothing more than so-and-so son. We may, we may get nothing more than that. But it doesn't matter. Because spirit knows. Uh, sometimes we get a name. Sometimes they ask us to treat for Rita. And Rita is Teresa's daughter. I'm pulling names out of hats right now. <laughs> and, um, but we might not even get that. I have seen prayer requests that are, spirit knows, please treat. That's it. I don't know what I'm treating for. I don't know who I'm treating for. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because all I know is I have seen a request. And so I go to Spirit and I say, all right, I know you've heard this request. I've heard this request. Please. And that's it. That's it. That's all it has to be. It can be as simple as please and thank you. It doesn't have to be a 15 minute glorious, um, epic Shakespeare sonnet for prayer. Sometimes it can be as simple as please and thank you. And that is the power of our word. All right. Um, since the focus of our treatment or prayers is in the one mind, the mere act of identifying our affirmation with that person or thing brings about the effect upon him, her, or it. So, today, I am identifying myself, everyone else, and everything I do with the Divine Presence. And that's the first step. Or oh, actually, it's technically, it's the second. There is a Divine Presence. And I am a part of that Divine Presence, just as I know that each and every one of you are a part of that divine presence. I'm using the, I guess I would say the royal you, <laughs> the royal we, um, when I when I talk to you, because I don't always know who's, in fact, I rarely know who's watching. Um, so I am talking to you, and that's why I'm using you in, substitute, in, in substitution for a name. Um, but if I know your name, I'll use your name. Uh, because I'm going to identify you with the Divine Presence. Second step of treatment. I am not trying to influence people. I am not holding thoughts to make things happen. I am not concentrating Divine Energies for any purpose whatsoever. I don't have to concentrate them because they are inexhaustible and not bound in time and space. So exactly as much of the divine energies as I need will be available to me. Exactly as much of the divine energies as you need will be available to you at any time. Because it's infinite. And it's hard to wrap your mind around it, but it is. So I'm not trying to influence people. They have the choice to accept the energy. I am not holding thoughts trying to make them happen. I'm not using my willpower. I am simply stating, looking for the reality with the capital R behind the reality with the little r. Looking for the truth behind the conditions. I am not concentrating the divine energies for any purpose whatsoever. I don't have to concentrate them. They're infinitely available. Rather, I am still... Be still and know that I am God. 
knowing that God is all over, in all, and through all. Through my affirmation, I am watching, expecting, and knowing that there will be a reaction through whatever I identify with my word. Now, that sentence is a little weird. Okay. Through my affirmation, I am watching, expecting, and knowing that there will be a reaction through whatever I identify with my word. Through whatever I identify with my word. Basically, be still and know that I am God. I have put my prayer into spirit, into the law. And that's all I have to do. Now, if I receive guidance that says, go here, do this, that is me putting feet under my treatment, moving towards my treatment. If I treat for another person and they receive guidance, and they move towards that treatment that they have asked me for, and treating for other people is interesting because when you treat for other people and they've asked you for treatment, then generally they will tell you what they want. When other people ask you to treat for other people, but you don't know exactly what you want, then you simply treat for the highest and the best in the situation. Even if you don't know the situation, it's like I am knowing the highest and the best outcome of whatever it is that you are currently facing. Uh, I don't need details. And that is one of the great things about being a, a, a science of mind practitioner. We don't need details. If you wish to give us details, great, but we don't need them. We simply will treat for the highest and the best outcome of whatever it is that you are currently working on. I identify with my word. Therefore, I am at ease. I am at peace. I affirm the divine presence and its manifestations as happiness, prosperity, and well-being for everyone. And really, that's kind of what we're going for. I affirm the divine presence. I affirm the divine presence in me. I affirm the divine presence in you. I affirm the divine presence in everyone. I recognize everybody as a child of God. And all that that means. And what it means to me is that they are loved, that they are cared for, and that they have the power to see beyond the conditions. And if they can see beyond the conditions, they can work beyond the conditions. I'm also a big believer in resource allocation. So I'll always treat for resource allocation. That's a big one for me. All right. So we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit. We dwell in spirit and spirit in us because spirit has given us of itself. That's me corrupting John. <laughs> All right. So first step of treatment is recognizing that there is one power. The second step of treatment is identifying with that power. And if you can identify it with it, then the second, the second part of the second step is to, then when you get into the realization, which is the third step, you identify who you're treating for. And sometimes you are treating for you and sometimes you are treating for someone else. And sometimes you're just treating for the world. Signs of my ministers do that a lot. It's like, when we don't know what to treat for, we always know what to treat for. And that's the highest and the best. For love and for everyone in the situation to recognize that, to recognize who they are. Beloved children of God. All right. Am I giving away too many ministerial secrets? <laughs> no. It's not a secret. Um, and that is it. Uh... I'm not, I'm not sure I clearly saw a mission for today. Well, <laughs> outside of this one, our mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to identify ourselves and everyone else and everything we do with the Divine Presence. Our mission today is to identify with the Divine Presence and to identify 
not only ourselves, but everyone and everything else with divine presence. Basically, look around and recognize God. So, which is one of the things that I say, you know, uh, shortly after encouraging you to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, I encourage you to go look in the mirror and see God looking back at you. And then to look into another living being's eyes and see God looking back at you. To recognize that back of every living being, that spirit, that we all share that same spirit. That we all come from the same source. So, as I said, please do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Um, if you're in this area, spring, uh, open your windows. Listen to the bird song. The birds were having a, a go this morning. Um, it was really nice to at 7.30 in the morning to, to listen to them sing. Um, but get some fresh air. Engage your mind and your body. Do something for you. Do something for you. And remember that when you treat, whatever it is that you treat for, Please add on the highest and the best because it opens your treatments up to more than you think. Sometimes we treat for a specific thing and there's something just over that we could also. It's like, so I want this, but I'm also open to higher and better. I'm open to more. And that is a loving, kind, and compassionate thing that you can always do for yourself. So, um, I believe it's Friday. That means I get to go to the park tomorrow. Yay. Um, so do what you need to do to make it a wonderful day. And know that I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. Around. Because I get to play with squirrels tomorrow. Uh, Reverend David should be on Facebook Live around 5 p.m. Um, I know we're coming up on this year of doing this. Uh, and I, I'm quite sure David's committed to continuing and I am as well. So, uh, I got to dig out that book in the next few days. So if you guys want to follow along, there will be a new book soon. Okay, beloveds. Um, I'm going to move into the process of my day and I'm going to remind you to open the windows of your soul. Allow that breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven. Now you are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased, always. This is our state of grace. And the best thing about grace is, we don't have to do anything to earn it. Grace is freely given. So, remember who you are. Remember who you are and know that you're loved. All right, beloveds. Um, have a wonderful day. Do what you need to do to make it fantastic. <laughs>